Hey, and welcome back. We've all heard about used car scams on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist, the original, right? But this takes scamming to a whole new level where people think they're actually buying from a real dealership, but it's a clone. If you're someone you know is currently shopping for a car, the next couple minutes could save you a lot of money and a lot of headache. These scammers are banking millions every single month, and I'm gonna expose exactly how they do it and what you need to look out for when shopping for a used car. If you haven't already subscribed below or not, that's cool too. Let me break this down really quick. When you buy a car from a car dealer, regardless of their reputation, you're buying from a licensed business, which has to have a business license, which has to have a retail dealership license, which is regulated by the DMV of every state, as well as an insurance bond. So they need all of this in order to sell to the public. So in other words, if something goes wrong, you can sue them, you can take them to court. And you've probably heard these traditional scams like, hey, I'm deploying overseas and I need to sell the car as fast as possible, or it's my mom's and she's overseas or she's not in the country, but I have the title. This is played out and these scammers are banking on the perceived security of buying from a licensed dealer. And that's at the core of their scam. So to get their scam up and running, it's broken up into three steps. Set up, advertise, and the hustle. Let's break it out. Phase one, the setup. First, they need to clone a real dealership. They purchase a similar domain name or a name of the dealership they're cloning or maybe even a domain name, but with a different extension, like instead of a .com, they might put a .net. So they'll also get a similar email of that dealership they're trying to clone. Their next step is they'll go to a dealership software provider and they'll create an account with them. Now they're gonna have a website filled with fake cars. Well, real cars from real dealers, just ones that are no longer for sale or for sale in a different state. And they're gonna pick photos which are usually really good, but generic without showing the exterior of the building or any dealership branding. Now you might be thinking, oh, what's the point of that? I can just find a real dealer on Google Maps and it's gonna expose the scam right away, right? No, hang with me. They look for dealerships that recently went out of business. Now, this is pretty easy because you can go on any DMV and do a dealership license search. Since it's an established business already, it has a Google profile with reviews and all of that. Some of these guys will even verify the Google listing by waiting at the mailman to come to that location, that empty location, which has gone out of business. So Google will send like this little postcard that says verify your address, and now they can get access to the Google location. This will give them access to the Google business profile. But most of these guys, they don't go out of their ways because they flip these dealerships pretty fast. And the last step in their setup process is they're gonna take these vehicles and they're gonna price them between like 10 to 15, maybe 20% below market value because they know if the deal sounds too good to be true, nobody's gonna buy it. It's not one of these situations where, you know, you're looking at a 50K car for 30K. They're gonna take a 50K car and they'll put it in for like 44, 44, five. So you think you're really getting a steal. In this way, they never have to play that high pressure card. And I'll get to that in a sec. So stage two, advertising. Now that this fake dealership has a website, they have inventory, they have their photos, they have all the pricing set up, right? It's time to start marketing these vehicles. Now this is where it gets interesting. All of these guys are spending thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars every single month. And you're gonna see these cars all over the place. You'll see them on Craigslist, you will see them on Facebook Marketplace as vehicle ads. You might even see them on like CarGurus, AutoTrader, and Cars.com. But if you're wondering or thinking like, what a bunch of idiots, why would they spend their own money? Because it can be tracked back to them, right? Well, guess what? These marketing dollars are coming from credit card identity theft victims. We know that firsthand. So now they're set up, they've got their advertising going. Part three, the hustle. Here's how these guys make money. They know really well that the average shopper is super savvy and they're not gonna send that payment in full without seeing or at least test driving the car. So they focus on deposits and down payments only. This is their game. They're gonna pick vehicles that are in really high demand or sometimes a rare vehicle. And since they have, and they know they have the best price on the market, they play the urgency card, not the high pressure, hey, you gotta do this now card. Because the urgency, the consumer is gonna create the urgency. They're gonna say, damn, it's a good deal. I gotta get on this. So when you call them, they're gonna pick up and say, yeah, we just got this car in. Ton of interest. We wanna move it fast. If you wanna take a look at it, we can take a deposit and hold it for you for a couple days. This is their game. But keep in mind, these guys are super sharp. They're not playing high pressure. 
because they don't have to. The price is right. The consumer creates the pressure. And their goal is to take between $500 and a couple thousand dollars for a down payment or a deposit. Whatever seems feasible, whatever seems reasonable, whatever they can take. And then they're going to take your payment via either cashier's check, wire transfers, and sometimes even Zelle and ACH payments. But if you're wondering, like, how do they get money out of the account? Well, back to the identity theft victims. They're running their whole bank account. We've even heard of some guys asking for gift cards. Gift cards, because you can't be tracked. And their next step is, great, let's set up the appointment. This one you want to come in and check out the vehicle. We can even send it to an inspection station right down the street or a mechanic of your choice. And this is the last time you're going to hear from them. These guys run multiple dealerships at the same time with different names, similar inventory, and they switch them really fast. Like I'm talking two to three weeks, they switch dealership because there's an infinite amount of used dealers that either went out of business in the last year or five years ago. It doesn't matter to them. Let's talk about how to avoid these. So if you're buying a car and something doesn't feel 100% right about the person you're talking to, follow this. Ask them for a video test drive. With a video test drive, these guys need to get on FaceTime or WhatsApp or Viber or whatever on a video call and show you their face and show you the actual vehicle, which they don't have. And they don't want to show you their face. They're not going to do it. So anybody who doesn't want to get on a video call that's either out of state or says, hey, I do appointments only, this is a red light. And a lot of these guys will advertise their cars out of state. So for example, cars in New Jersey and they're gonna advertise it in Oregon. So tell them, hey, I'm in the area today and I wanna stop by. They'll probably tell you, no, no, wait, it's by appointment only big red flag next you want to check them out on google maps but on the street view and you're gonna see a car dealership there most of the time we have to keep looking while you're on street view of that dealership go in the lower right hand corner and check the date when Google Maps took that picture, when it was last updated. Another thing for independent dealers usually have their phone number somewhere on the building or a sign in front of the building. So if you see that on Google Street View, call that number and see if they're still in business. They might be able to change that phone number on their Google listing profile, but it's, you can't go back in time and change the actual number of the business. Can't find a number, fine. Find a business across the street or next door, find their phone number, call them ask them, hey, is this dealer still in business? You can try searching the DMV for their dealer license. So go to that state's DMV. So if they say they're out of California, go to Google, Google California car dealer license lookup or license check search form and it's going to tell you if that license is still active or if it's expired because this needs to be renewed every year and don't bother asking them for dealer license it's probably going to be photoshop and fake but do keep in mind like some states um, like new jersey for example they don't make this information accessible or public so you can bank on a lot of these scammers to be in states that don't make dealer license lookups available to the public next check the google and yelp reviews if you don't see anything here for a few months, this is a red flag. But you might see a couple reviews from like a month ago and then nothing for the last year. Of course, red flag. And of course, ask for free Carfax. This is going to show you the last time that vehicle was posted for sale anywhere, especially if it's by a dealer. And no, this is not a sponsored video. So use Carfax or AutoCheck or whatever you want. A quick side note, there's a ton of legitimate dealers who ask for a deposit to hold the vehicle. If all of the above check out, make sure to use a credit card so you can later dispute it as a fraudulent transaction if it turns out to be a fake dealership. But typically these scammers will not request credit cards. I work in the automotive software space and we do a lot of identity checks when a new dealer comes on board. So I've had discussions with probably five or six different scammers over the course of the last year. And what I found most interesting is how well they know the industry, the slang that they use in the process of how car dealership works. I'm certain that every single one of these guys that I've talked to must have had dealership industry experience. Now on that note, there's many wonderful, honest, and hardworking car dealers in every single city. That's a fact. It's a hard industry, uh, but we're going to discuss that in future videos. Uh, that's it for this video. Happy car shopping. Any questions, drop us a comment. We'll answer. We're also coming with a lot of different car buying and selling scams over the next couple of weeks. So to get notified, subscribe below.